The main reason Israel is keeping up its war in Gaza is that it has yet to destroy Hamas and the militant group's underworld network of tunnels. Its latest find is also its biggest. Stretching about four kilometers from the area's border crossing north of Gaza, the tunnel plums as low as 50 meters below ground. An idea video shows tunnels equipped with electricity, ventilation and communication systems. Oh, these are not rudimentary structures. They're built to withstand attack and to protect those who use them. Dismantling the tunnels is key to Israel's goal of wiping out Hamas. The IDF says it has destroyed at least 500 tunnels, but has identified as many as 800. Towns, refugee camps and even hospitals have been raided in their search. And that's despite Hamas denying it operates control centers beneath civilian structures. Fortified with military-grade technology and booby traps, the IDF is reluctant to send its soldiers to investigate the labyrinth. It's a network running 20 meters underground and snakes 500 kilometers in total length. Hamas and other groups began digging in the mid-1990s using electric or pneumatic jackhammers. In 2007, these passageways would allow people and goods to cross into Gaza during the Israeli-Egypt blockade. Many tunnels are crammed but built for human purposes. Or this entryway barely two meters high and a meter wide. No more than a single file is possible. Reinforced with thick cement walls or separated by blast-proof metal doors, not all of them are connected. Israel claims Hamas uses the bunkers to store supplies and weapons and to launch rocket attacks over the border. Other sections are used for the movement of people and equipment and allegedly as command centers. We do know the IDF has considered flooding the tunnels to take down Hamas and has consulted the U.S. on the feasibility of that plan. It has also tested flooding on a limited basis. One report says the IDF has begun pumping water from the Mediterranean Sea. What are the chances of that operation succeeding? A massive amount of water would have to be pumped for it to be effective. And experts say even if water is pumped in at high pressure, that would not be enough or might not be enough to destroy the cement walls or the thick metal doors separating different sections. This would not be the first time tunnels have been flooded. In 2013, Egypt filled the tunnels with seawater and cement to deter the smuggling of weapons by Islamist insurgents from Gaza into the Sinai Peninsula. But the flooding had only a limited impact on the smuggling and created more problems than it solved. A large swathe of the city were inundated with polluted water, wreaking havoc on Gaza's freshwater supplies. A person authorities say the event damaged crops and prompted the spread of disease. If Israel should proceed with the flooding, it could be a case of history repeating itself. Gaza once again awash, worsening what is already a humanitarian crisis. The flood plan also carries great risk for Israel. It could imperil the lives of hostages still held underground by Hamas and put Israel in the international firing line for possibly jeopardizing Palestinian civilians and the environment itself. But it's clear the war in Gaza will not cease until the tunnels are disabled by whatever means. And for more, we're joined by Dr. Ayal Pinko. He's a senior research fellow at the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies. Dr. Pinko, I pick up the final line from that uh, report. War in Gaza will not cease until the tunnels are disabled, if that is an explicit aim, and I believe it is in Tel Aviv. The IDF would need very clear, I suppose, direction in terms of how many tunnels there are, exactly where they might end and where they might begin. Does the IDF has the have the clarity of that kind of intelligence on the tunnels beneath the Gaza Strip to, to I suppose, achieve the same and say it has achieved the same? Yeah, thank you very much. And as you said, uh, there is a huge uh, gap intelligence uh, from the beginning of uh, uh, digging the tunnels, which is 15, 20 years ago, since the Gaza Strip became uh, totally under the... Uh, authority of the Palestinian Authority and then by Hamas. Uh, so we don't know really uh, how many uh, tunnels they are, probably more than 1,000. You, you saw part, part of that. And we don't know where the entrances, the exits, uh, what is the, the path of those uh, um, tunnels. So this is still a huge uh, intelligence uh, gap.
Well, uh, as you say, this dates back many years. In fact, if I just pick up one figure, 2005, the state control in Israel specifically identifying technology and intelligence as reasons for failure in Israel's attempt to manage what was happening in terms of security because of these tunnels. You'd imagine at least between 2005 to 2023, yeah. something might have been done about those tunnels. Yes, uh, you know, uh, since uh, 2005, since the, uh, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip got their own uh, freedom and uh, governance uh, over the Gaza without any kind of Israeli interference over there, uh, Israel lost a lot of it, its intelligence uh, measures over there. There are, there was uh, still, but uh, it's, it's still creating an uh, intelligence gap. There are never 100 percent of uh, understanding the, uh, the reality. So Israel, during the years, uh, um, uh, tried to gather and assess other types of intelligence regarding the uh, force buildup of Hamas and uh, the infrastructure of Hamas and uh, things like that less in the uh, the tunnels uh, because uh, it's, it's very complicated to understand it uh, and uh, the way that uh, Hamas handled that in deception and in taking into consideration that Israel is collecting intelligence against Hamas. They did some other issues. Uh, we saw that in the past in order to dismantle the Israeli intelligence uh, capacity regarding that. All right, uh, let's bring you up uh, more up to date. Now, uh, you, you, were, you were in office, I suppose you were on duty until November 2017, very high up in intelligence in Israel. So this is not primarily your responsibility. But what happened on the 7th of October? Many have blamed failures in Israeli intelligence. Very quickly, if you could give us your take on that. What, how would you assess Israeli intelligence in terms of managing what happened or what should not have happened in October? Yes, as as uh, many many evidence are being collected and uh, gathering gathered in the last uh, few weeks, we understand what I published at uh, the, uh, the mid of October. Uh, the Israeli intelligence had a very accurate in, uh, intelligence about what Hamas is going to do. It's a doctrine, uh, the weapons, the force built up, uh, all the the strategy regarding uh, uh, how to take over Israeli territory and how to make a bridge that connects between the Gaza Strip to the other Palestinian Authority in the Judea and Samaria. Uh, so the information was there. Like in many cases, by the way, in the past in, in other nations. What happened over there that the senior rank officers in the military and in the political uh, part, uh, uh, part said this cannot be because Hamas didn't take part in the May attacks of made by the Islamic Jihad. Israel, the Israeli government gave Hamas a lot of opportunities for prosperity, for culture, for education. More than 20,000 people came from the Gaza Strip every day to Israel to work. So the, uh, the way of thinking of the senior rank officers and the political uh, party was that if we'll give them prosperity, we called it the, uh, the economical peace, they will not have any kind of motivation to attack, even though all the intelligence signs over there where they totally weren't on the table. So what we can assess from that is that the intelligence assessment was just wrong, taking into consideration the intelligence part and the political moves and the economical move that said, that said right. okay, it uh, cannot be. The intelligence if, if I could cannot pick be up because that, uh, Dr. we Pinkle. want to do something else. Yes, uh, a final question yes. here. I'm afraid we're running out of time. Uh, you talk about economic prosperity. Now we're looking, our correspondent was mentioning earlier in the bulletin, we need to look at everyone's calling it's the, the day after the war. Now, this tunnel vision on tunnels, yes. the tunnel vision on taking out Hamas leaders, uh, when we look at what should happen after the, after the war, so who will govern Gaza? Uh, is Israel putting the right objectives in place, whether it's flooding tunnels, killing leaders? Is it doing the right things to ensure that the right conditions are in place, such as economic prosperity, to ensure that there is a sustainable solution to the Gaza Strip? Final question. Yes, I think that Israel is uh, politically uh, operating with uh, the, the UN, the US and Egypt, the major players, in order to understand what will be in the next day from the political uh, point of view. Uh, from the, <clears throat> sorry, from the military point of view, it's totally uh, understandable that we need to eliminate Hamas, ISIS, uh, from Gaza and to remove them totally with the leaders 
that should be the military goal for sure. Um, I, I do believe personally that uh, Israel cannot control back um, the Gaza Strip as it was up to 2005, uh, since the Six Days Wars in 1967. So I do believe that should be some kind of uh, uh, international force, UN force that should be in control of the Gaza Strip. By the way, because the Palestinian Authority, which is also uh, Hamas and PLO, it's also a terror group, which is also terrorizing Israel in uh, Judah and Samaria. This, I think, should be the most uh, appropriate uh, for now, the solution for, for the next years to come. Oh, thanks for that. Dr. A.L. Pinko from the Bigan Sadat Center for Strategic Studies.